to stage to share his remarks. Thank you, Roshika and John, for expertly guiding us through the proceedings tonight. Uh, can I acknowledge the country and the elders, customs and traditions of the Ngunnawal and the Ngambri people of this part of the world? And can I in particular thank uh, Ninjanet uh, for your generous welcome to country uh, and to you, Your Excellency, uh, for hosting us tonight, for your uh, brilliant speech, for bringing us together for the opportunity to celebrate such an auspicious occasion. Uh, and I can see from the representation here uh, from uh, countries all around the world, from Canberra, from all around Australia, uh, just how important this celebration is to us all. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to represent the Albanese government here tonight uh, as a firm friend of India and of Australia's growing Indian communities. And I wanted to acknowledge uh, my parliamentary colleagues who are here with us as well. Uh, Andrew Giles, the Minister for Immigration. Uh, Bill Shorten, the member, Minister for Government Services and the NDIS. Uh, Tim Watts, the Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs. And also Michelle Rowland, the Minister for Communications. And can I also acknowledge, given we're in his uh, territory as well, uh, Senator David Pocock. Uh, who's joined us here. All of the members that I've mentioned and others who are here tonight as well. Really firm friends of the Indian people, for Indian Australians, Australians of Indian origin. Uh, powerful, prominent and persistent voices uh, for this community across our country. Uh, what an auspicious occasion tonight is. 75 years of Indian independence. And so important that we do mark it here and around the country. On Saturday, I was with the Honorary Consul in Brisbane and with Brisbane's Indian community in the Roma Street parklands. And the Gandhi statue there, unveiled by Prime Minister Modi in 2014, reminded me of another famous Indian landmark here in Australia. It's about three and a half hours north of here by car in Bathurst. Now, Bathurst might seem an unlikely location for a statue of India's first Prime Minister. But if you're in town and you wander through the Peace Garden, at the edge of the park you will find it, the bust of Pandit Nehruji, a gift from the Indian people, signifying and celebrating the unlikely and unprecedented friendship between one of their independence heroes, Nehru, and Bathurst's own hometown hero, Prime Minister and Treasurer, Ben Chifley. And that statue reminds us that on the 13th of June, 1951, at the Hotel Currajong, just across the lake from here, Ben Chifley gave an interview to a visiting journalist from India. The Labor Party's old statesman was passing on a message to his friend, the revered leader, of a young democracy. And he said this, tell Nehru not to lose heart, but to carry on. India will still show the way to peace. Now those were actually the final words of Ben Chifley's final interview. He died later that evening. But from that unlikely friendship has sprung decades of goodwill and good fortune between our two nations. Goodwill and good fortune that we toast tonight as India marks 75 years of independence. And as we know, India is the world's largest democracy. It's a beacon of progress and innovation. It's a nation turning extraordinary economic growth into social advancement for its people. Australia's relationship with India is one of dosti, friendship. We saw that friendship on display when Prime Minister Albanese was embraced by Prime Minister Modi at the Quad meeting in Tokyo, literally a few hours after being sworn in here. And through that comprehensive strategic partnership that His Excellency mentioned and our economic cooperation and trade agreement, our ties will only grow stronger. 
And the Foreign Minister and the Assistant Foreign Minister has done that again today, announcing nine new grants from the Australia-India Council to deepen collaboration between our countries. We look forward to welcoming Prime Minister Modi here for the Quad meeting next year. And we look forward to visiting India for the G20 Finance Ministers and other meetings next year when you host that important group. Together, Australia and India have a shared duty to ensure a peaceful, inclusive and resilient Indo-Pacific regional order. A region where the rights of all states are equally respected, regardless of mass or might. Prime Minister Modi describes this as our sacred duty. And in so many areas, India shows us the way. It can be a populous nation, a powerful nation, a prosperous nation, and yes, you can be free and fair as well. India offers a model to the world. Now, earlier today, Prime Minister Modi unfurled the Tiranga flag at the Red Fort, a tradition undertaken by each Prime Minister since it was first done on that first Independence Day in 1947. Except, it wasn't quite the first today, not really. Thanks to time zones, technically, the first was here, mm, in Canberra. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically at 34 Muggleway Red Hill. <laughs> the home of your predecessors and yourself, Your Excellency. At midday, back then, in 47, in Canberra's winter sun, a few hours before the unfurling in Delhi, more than 300 people gathered to watch the tricolour raised, sending a message of support and solidarity to then 300 million newly free citizens on the other side of the Indian Ocean. The day before, on the eve of independence, Nehru told his nation, at the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. We end today a period of ill fortune and India discovers herself again, the day appointed by destiny. So tonight we celebrate India, her freedom, her fortune and future promise. We celebrate her discovery and her determination to see that destiny fulfilled. We celebrate the extraordinary contribution of the Indian diaspora to our own national life. And in our celebration, we are reminded that through 75 years of independence and progress, the greatest gift that India gives Australia and the world is her people. Jai Hind, long live India and happy Independence Day. India at 75. And now, for your entertainment, 